Before you get started with the lesson, let me give you a quick overview of how to use this series of videos. This is a series that covers Microsoft Office 2013 using documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. I'm a teacher. I work in Tolleson, Arizona at a high school called Westview High School. These assignments are selected to be exactly like what you would do in the real world. So using Office is what you'll use in a real office or in a real business. There is an assignment book that accompanies every video. Each page in the assignment book has a checklist of the things that you should accomplish in each lesson. Watch the video lesson to see how things are done. After you create your own document using the video as a model, you may have some modifications such as your own business names or your own paragraphs or your own data, but it'll look very similar. Now you can either watch the whole video through at one time or pause it as you go through it. Finally, print the document and your classroom teacher will grade it. So now, let's move on to your next assignment. Welcome to assignment number three with Microsoft Excel. What you see on the screen before you is a final version of the payroll spreadsheet. You notice that it's got a lot of cells. Don't worry, most of these are copied and pasted. It's an extension of assignment number one and two. In the gray area here, where you see hours worked, in the previous assignments we only were concerned with one week of pay. And this assignment we're going to add four more weeks of pay and we, were, we will use calculations to find out how much they earned, their overtime bonus, and then here in the blue area their total pay. So we'll start from an ass assignment here that we did before and we'll simply extend it to look like the one that you just saw. Well first of all what we need to do is add some new columns. So starting in column E, I'm going to right click and choose insert. I'm clicking on the column header. Let's do this a few times and we'll give us some space to work with for other weeks in the month. Now starting here in column E3 I'm going to add seven days to this date. Notice the first date that we chose was January 1st. You can either type in January 8th for the next week or we can use a calculation. Let's use a calculation. I'm going to say this equals this square D3 plus 7. And now it starts at January 8th. Now if I use the fill command I'm going to create several more columns and they're automatically calculated. Next I'm going to invent some more hours. These are numbers that should be approximately 40. They can be a little less, they can be a little bit more, but it doesn't matter really what the numbers are just so that we have some data to work with for each employee. Now we've reached the end of our data for the number of hours for each employee. It looks like I've created one extra column here in column I, so I'm simply going to remove it by choosing right click on the column header and delete. Now let's go to the overtime hours. I'm going to put a date here for the week January 1st and once again I'm going to insert some columns. You can actually insert columns more than one at a time. If you highlight four column row headers and choose insert you get four new rows. Once again I'd like to add seven to the date that's in January 1st. This plus seven and fill to the right. Now let's add some overtime hours. Now I want to calculate the hours of overtime for each week. Well we've already done this in the previous assignment with this famous if formula. If D4 is greater than 40, then give us the value D4 minus 40, otherwise give us 0. I can take this entire block and copy it. I'm going to right click on it, and choose copy, and I'm going to right click on the next square and choose paste. So now it's calculating the overtime hours for the week of January 8th. Let's double click on this cell, and you notice that we are now 
calculating the overtime hours from this blue square, the 42 hours from January 8th. So the formula automatically adjusted for the column letter. This is using cell E4. I'm pressing escape now, double clicking on this one. And you notice that this cell was using the cell D4 as its source for its numbers. So when you copy and paste, Excel automatically assumes that you are relatively addressing columns somewhere else in the spreadsheet. So if this is one cell to the right, then the next one is one cell to the right. I'm going to copy and paste again. So I'll copy this row here, copy and paste it, copy and paste again and paste again. So now we have overtime hours calculated for every week. Now when you start to get a lot of cells on a spreadsheet it can get confusing looking at so many numbers. So Excel allows us to paint the cells in certain colors. These cells here that I'm highlighting now are all related to the number of hours that they worked. Let's give them a color. Let's paint them all something gray. So now you can see that they all belong together as a block. For overtime hours, let's paint them a different color. Let's choose, you can choose whatever color you like, but I'm going to choose some kind of a, a salmon color. And now we're going on to calculate their pay. This pay here really is the pay for January 1st. So the week of January 1st is what they got paid here. Now, I'm going to calculate the pay for every week. So let's insert about, um, how many, three more columns. And let's do once again, equals the previous date plus seven. And then fill that formula to the right. Looks like we need one more column. I'll fill this one to the right. Now, how did we calculate pay? We simply took two numbers from their hours and the wage. Hours worked, which was 41, times their wage. We're going to find something new here. If we just simply copy and paste these formulas, we're going to get the wrong result. I'll show you what happens in a minute. I'm going to copy this formula, paste it for the next week. Now, why in the world is everyone making over $1,000, some up to $3,300? What happened? Well, let's double click on this cell and find out where it's coming from. First of all, you notice it's very difficult to see the other side of the world here. We can actually zoom out on a spreadsheet and we can make it easier to see the whole page. So let's zoom out to 50%. Uh, we can see the whole spreadsheet now, but the numbers are a little small. Let's choose something else. I'm going to select the part that I'm interested in. Just these cells. Click on Zoom and choose Fit Selection. That will fit this highlighted area on the screen. So now I can see hourly wage all the way to the last formula. Okay, now let's go look in this cell here. What's going on in cell number 04? It says take the cells D4 and multiply by E4 and give me the results. D4 and E4. Well, that worked great while we were in the previous week. We were taking the hourly wage times the number of hours. Well, now the relative referencing is saying, well, let's take the first two cells and multiply them together. So we need to make a modification. This actually should be referencing C4. I'm pressing escape on the keyboard and I'm going to delete all of this here. I'm going to right click on these and choose clear contents. What I need is what's called absolute cell referencing. So I'm going to modify my original formula here. It's telling me in this formula that we should use C4 times D4. And I know that I'm going to copy it to the right four times. 
Well, what I really want to do is keep referencing the hourly wage because that's how you calculate pay. Hourly wage in C4 times the number of hours worked, which is going to be D, E, and F, and G, and H. So is there a way to tell Excel not to use relative referencing, instead absolute referencing? That's what we're going to call it anyway. I'm going to go up to this formula bar and modify the letter C. I'm going to simply type in a dollar sign in front of it. That doesn't mean a value dollars. It just means that every time that you think about cell C or C4, you're going to always use column C. For the first week, nothing changes. All of the numbers should stay exactly the same. But now when I copy this range of cells and paste it into the next column, let's take a look at what this reference is. I'm going to double click here. You notice that it is still referencing cell C4, but now the other cell is relative referencing. It says let's move to the right one every time. And so it's now multiplying the hourly wage times the hours from January 8th, or the 42. I'm pressing escape on the keyboard. Now I'm going to highlight this whole range. This time I'm going to, instead of copy and paste, I'm just going to use the fill right option using the little square in the bottom right corner. It fills right and all of the wages are calculated. Let's double click here. You see it's using their proper range. It's number of hours in this case is 30, but it's still referencing C4. And so now their overtime, I'm sorry, their, their regular pay work is all calculated correctly. Well, let's give this range a separate color as well. This is our regular pay. So I'm going to highlight this section here. Go back to home and choose a color from the bucket. Let's see, this time I like green. Green for pay. Let's move to the right a little bit. Now we need to calculate their overtime for each week. Their overtime pay. Well, we've done that for the first week, but we need to have some more weeks. So let's insert four new columns. Choose the insert command. Let's put in a date for each of these columns. This one was January 1st. This one's going to equal the first cell, plus 7. And then fill it to the right. And so we have all of the weeks for January. Once more, this is going to be a problem if we don't have absolute cell referencing. Right now, the overtime pay is correct for the first week. If we fill this to the right, we're going to have a problem. We're going to have numbers that are way too high, like this one. If I double click here, you see it's referencing overtime hours, but way back at the beginning, it is referencing not the wage that we're expecting. It's referencing cell D4. So we're going to have to change this formula to use absolute cell referencing again. So I'm going to clear these, highlight them all, and choose clear contents from the menu. I'm going to double click on this formula. And instead of C4, I'm going to reference it as dollar sign C4. And I'm going to copy this formula all the way through the block. Here's another way to copy and paste through the entire block. I'm going to copy just one cell and then highlight the entire place where I want to use this cell and choose paste. And all of the formulas now show the overtime bonus formula for each week. Okay, the last thing we should probably do is give this its own color. So let's use the overtime pay as a color such as, I don't know, let's pick uh, something red. Something blue? How about blue? Blue is looking good. Now for the total. What in the world is a total going to look like? Now first of all I need to zoom out a bit. Let's go to zoom to 50%. Total wages. Well, the total wages right now is calculated using, it looks like pay, 
plus the overtime bonus. Looks great. Let's put in a date over this. This is going to be January 1st. And once more, we need to calculate equals this cell plus 7. And we're going to use a few more weeks of this. Now this time, we should be able to get away with using relative cell referencing. If I highlight this, and I'm filling to the right, I'm going to double click on the cell titles so that they all adjust to the proper width. Now let's check this one out. If I double click on this cell, what's it adding together? Looks like it's adding the pay from the first, no, from the second week times the overtime bonus for the second week. That's exactly what we wanted. Let's see it. Try another one here. I'm going to pick this one. Randomly choose one cell. It looks like it's adding the proper cells. So in this case, we don't want absolute cell referencing. The usual default settings for relative referencing work just fine. Let's add one more color and we'll call it a day. Let's go to a darker gray. One more thing that you might want to do is use the formulas across the bottom. I'm going to actually highlight this section here and fill it all the way to the right. We calculate the totals, the maximums, the minimums for every week. One more thing you might want to add here is the total pay for all weeks. Let's say January pay. And I'm going to put in this equals sum formula. Equals sum. And then add up all four of these. Five of these. With a close parenthesis. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Double click again. So we're adding up all five weeks that were paid in January. And then let's fill this down for everybody. And you can see now who is the top pay earner in the company. I'm going to copy this range, paste it over here. The maximum person is this one earned eight thousand dollars this month that looks like this line right here second from the last employee let's scroll to the left and see who that is second to the last employee the name is Trent Mann now when you print you're going to have a difficult time fitting all of this on one page fortunately Excel gives us a nice way to print all things on one sheet let's go to the file menu and choose print. <clears throat> now, down here it says no scaling. We are actually using five different sheets of paper to get everything printed. It's going to be very wasteful. Don't do that. First of all, we can turn the paper sideways. So let's change the orientation to landscape. That helps a little bit. Now it's only four pages wide. It says scaling here. We can say this, we could fit all of the columns on one page, or fit all the sheet in one page. Let's try that. Okay, it's very small. Seems to work though. Let's save it and print it as this size. 